Dear data analyst, listen, I get you. Contrary to what you might think, I totally understand where you might be coming from. This is probably the hundred tutorial you've watched on how to become a data analyst using simple tools like Excel. But you keep getting overpromised where you start a tutorial and before you realize you're watching the next tutorial over and over and over again, ever feeling like you're never ready to take that first step to even build a portfolio and start job searching. So, in this particular video, and the current videos for this particular series, what we're we'll looking at is how to become a data analyst using Excel. We are starting with Excel because it's primarily a very simple tool to use and really easy to have anyone get started on. And once you're done with that, you use other tools like SQL, Python, Power BI, Tableau, and the like. Now, for the way this tutorial is structured, the deliverables are, by the end of this particular series, you should be able to not only understand how to use Excel as a data analyst, but you should be able to confidently walk away with a full-blown project that you can add to your portfolio for a job search. So without much ado, let's jump right into the video. Now, before we even go into the details about starting how to use Excel and the like, there are very essential items that we have to get laid out at first. The first one is what exactly data analyst is. This is very important for me to go over. You can easily skip through following the timestamps in the description. But the reason why I want us to go over this once and for all is because people fail to understand the job description in the first place to be able to even do the actual job right so simply put a data analysis think of a data analyst as a detective but in for numbers we're able to find patterns ask the right questions we're able to help businesses primarily or any other person make smarter and data-driven decisions this is the entire premise of who a data analyst is right now just like every other role that exists there is a particular process that an analyst would have to follow to be able to make sure that they are confidently fulfilling their job responsibility. Okay, so they have, we have different structures for this, which I'm laying out on the screen. But the first and most important part of the data analyst process is asking the right questions. Now, although it might sound very easy and straight to the point, it's not very so. Oftentimes, it's actually that one step that most aspiring data analysts fail to do. What we have in mind is, oh, I find my data and I analyze and I'm done. But then because you ask the questions in the right place, you just end up getting confused about what exactly to do once you are done with your analysis. Right? So how exactly do you ask the right questions as a data analyst? It's very simple. As a matter of fact, there is a whole structure to be able to help you figure that out. And it's called the SMART structure, right? And the SMART is actually an acronym, which means S for specific, M for measurable, A for actionable, R for relevant, and then T for time bound, right? Now, what do acronyms exactly mean? Let's say that, for instance, you're working with a company that deals with oil and gas, and you're working as a data analyst there. And the Data manager comes to you as a general data analyst to help them find data about why exactly they are losing customers in the last quarter of 2024, right? Now, it seems like you have a clear question asked, right? Last quarter of 2024, so data, right? Actually, don't. Here's why. Because, because you're in the business, you know that you have about six different branches right in your company and so even though the boss is asking you to figure out why are losing sales in the last quarter which particular branch is of interest to you is it the full picture or is it just one particular branch of interest right why exactly are they looking to figure out why the sales are going down is it because they want to open a new branch in the same area is it because they want to be able to um not able to close on a particular branch because want to make better decisions for the marketing team who is the end user of that particular analysis once you're done is it really the same boss 
are going to use it or will be used by the CEO or the product head. You have to get those details. Those details are very important because once you just work with the premise that, oh, I have to find data because Wells wants to know why I have used in the last quarter, you are going to be flying very blind. So this particular situation, here is how the smart health. First of all, specific, which I already spoke about, right? What are the specifics? Why are you exactly looking for the reduction in sales in the last quarter? What, what are you looking for? Which brand are you looking at, right? And then why are you looking at it? Who's going to be using that particular thing at the end of the day? That is very important. The next part, you have to figure, you have to be able to clarify what the measurements are, which is the next step of measure, right? By measure, what I mean is clarify from your boss, what exactly are you measuring by? Your boss doesn't work with the data, but he saw an observation. So why do you think he's saying that there's a job? Is it because he has ordered something that happened in the third quarter compared to last quarter of 2024? You have to get that clarity to be able to help you work into analysis with confidence. The next part is clarify what exactly your boss is going to use information for, which is the next part of actionable. Why exactly does your boss need you to make that decision? I think I already mentioned it in the beginning, but the whole context is that if you don't have an idea of what the actions are that are going to be taken under analysis, you're going to look in the wrong directions and hedge yourself in the long run, making you start the process over and over and over again. What are your expectations in terms of relevance? We are saying that yes, I should look at the reduction in the sales for a particular in the last month right but then what exactly mm -hmm. is it relevant for am i looking at the sales in only the first am i looking at the sales for only the the best performing for your product for the company or just across five particular products or it's all of them once again these are very important to give you the clarity and the context you need to help you be very confident about your work next for time bound you have to look at how exactly am I working with this given the set deadline because if you don't know the time I'm working with then it's going to affect your deliverables in the long run right but as you'd see these are only questions I'm asking my boss to be able to help me get the clarity I need to get into the work right but you don't have to ask smart questions only to your boss or whoever that's asking for your data in most cases you don't even have to ask all these questions in a particular order right it's only to give that clarity and the context. Now, after freaking all of that, right, you have to now come and sit back and then ask yourself those same questions to help you critically think what you can find from the data by asking yourself the specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-bound questions. Remember, this is the most important step of your analysis. As a matter of fact, here are a list of questions that we have asked our boss in this scenario and what we have also asked ourselves to be able to get lots of clarity in our analysis. This we're taking them more this for this we we'll have a more critical look in our analysis moving forward. So don't worry, just note this down for the meantime. This will be needed in the following upcoming parts of this series. Right? Okay. So now, so now that you have asked the smart question that you need to give the clarity and the context as a data analyst, your next step for you to take is to figure out how to collect your data. So there are two main ways of gathering data for analysis. The first step is by making sure that a company has already existing data. And this is applicable if the company already has some existing databases in some way that contains all of that data. Right. In this situation, you have to make sure that the questions that you asked in the beginning should have data points willing to answer those questions. Right. If not, then you must find a way to get those, those data points to answer those questions for you. Right. Let's say that, for instance, this is not part of the questions, but let's say that, for instance, you want to be able to figure out what feedback people are giving about the product. Right. Now, your data, your data set, you don't have the information tracked. So what you might want to do is go and find data in different places, would substitute it and then meet that question that was asked or brought up by your manager for that specificity and clarity, right? Now, second way to secure your data, particularly for people who are not working with companies and are out to do their own projects is by looking for data sets on 
available platforms like what is showing on the screen right now. Now, for the purpose of this video and tutorial, you're going to be using Cargo to help us get there faster. It can go because one of the one of the largest platforms that contains a lot of databases across different industries, right? But they are free to choose from other mm -hmm. platforms as well, right? So that is the idea. So come with me as I go to walk you through Cargo and how to access data sets in the scenario, right? Now, this has already been pre-recorded for the data sets, but as we are looking at data sets, I like to add a few pointers, right? The fact that we are looking at oil and gas industry in this particular series does not mean that you'd have to get an oil and gas project for your portfolio, right? The context behind this whole series was to make sure that you're able to think comfortably and very well as a data analyst. So let's say that you want to be able to work in the banking industry. Then go ahead, go to Cargo and find data about the banking industry. That fits your bill, right? And ask yourself the right questions in the previous step to what help you get there. Do you get me? Or for instance, just work in the quick commerce industry or in the stability industry, right? Ask yourself those right questions you want to ask yourself. Put yourself in the shoes of your boss or better so use AI. Give AI the scenario. Tell it to ask like your boss and then let it ask you some questions. Go to Cargo, any other data source platform, and then find the data to suit that need, right? Now, as you can see, we are done downloading our data sets and it's available for use, right? And at this point, I can successfully tell you that we have completed the step two of the data analysis stage, which is the data collection phase. Congratulations, you have come a long way. Now, in the next parts of the series, I'm going to be walking you through how to process your data as a data analyst using Excel. Right? In this particular phase, you've realized that you focused largely on how to think like a data analyst because it's often the gap that separates real data analysts from people who are just trying to and the perks of being a data analyst, right? So I hope this video helped you. Go over this as many times as you'd want. Practice this on your own as much as possible, particularly from the ask questions phase because it involves a lot of critical thinking. There is no rule whatsoever on how to ask the right questions. All you need is that framework and then thinking of thinking critically to able to help you answer those questions, ask those questions. I hope this video helped you. And I'll see in the next part of the video where we talk a little detail about processing your data and other steps. I'll see you there. Bye for now.